Well, let's now shift focus to our big story. And here on Mirna, we are trying to address the big concerns that have arisen now with this massive spike in cases in both the big metros of the country, both in Delhi and in Mumbai. Now, we spoke to the head of one of the biggest government hospitals in Delhi to understand more about the patients that have come into this hospital. In fact, what we are given to understand and what the authorities in the hospital tell us is none of the Omicron patients have shown low oxygen levels. So that has to be recorded as some amount of good news, at least at this stage, that these patients are not showing any requirement of oxygen supply. 70 patients were admitted in the hospital who were Omicron positive. Majority of them were asymptomatic. Neither did the patients need any extra oxygen or remdesivir for that matter. Now, medical oxygen shortage, remember, was one of the huge concerns during the second wave that, had made, that was mainly driven by the Delta variant. But yet, there are many unanswered questions. And the first uh, um, uh, of the questions that we are going to ask today is, what are the symptoms of uh, the cases that have come up? The new cases in Delhi, from what we understand, most of them are asymptomatic. What do health experts and treating doctors have to say? on the symptoms of the new cases and what does that tell us about this new wave? How different is it or in what ways is it uh, different from the Delta variant, the Omicron variant that we are talking about now? What can we decode and infer? So let's uh, welcome here on the broadcast joining us Dr. Ravi Malik, who is the CMD of Radix Healthcare, Dr. Chandrasekhar T, Director of Critical Care Fortis Hiranandani Hospital, and Dr. Swati Maheshwari, from inter who's an internal uh, medicine expert, also with us this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to come to uh, all of you with questions. But before that, I want to just play out what the MD of LNGP Hospital told us about those patients who have been admitted. Most of them are Omicron patients. Let's listen into this conversation with my colleague, Ayushman Kumar. We have the LNJP Medical Director, Dr. Suresh Kumar. Sir, thank you very much for taking out time. Uh, what are we seeing as per symptoms and how is the health status of all those patients who have been ad admitted uh, with Omicron variant in LNJP? Uh, so far, we have admitted uh, 70 patients from the beginning of uh, December. And out of 70 patients, 50 patients has been successfully discharged. And majority of these Omicron cases are asymptomatic. They didn't have any uh, fall in the oxygen saturation. Only uh, four patients out of 70 have the uh, mild symptoms. One patient have fever, body ache, and another patient have diarrhea, and uh, the third patient have headache. Like that, all uh, other patients did not have any problem. They were perfectly healthy. Sir, if there was more than one thing, then there was oxygen needs. The LNJP has worked on it, the Kendra government has worked on it. These Omicron patients are coming to you. How do they need oxygen? How do they see the drop of oxygen? What is happening in one patient? In 70 patients, in one patient, there is no fall in the oxygen level. Everything is normal. And the 50 patients we have discharged, they have no need for any treatment. They have no need for oxygen, remdesivir, or steroids. हमने कुछ पेशेंट्स को जिसको कि थोड़ा सा वीकनेस महसूस कर रहे थे उनको हमने मल्टीविटामिन दिया अदरवाइज ऑल दिस पेशेंट्स वर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड वेरी गुड रिकवरी इन वी हैव सीन इन ऑल दिस फिफ्टी पेशेंट्स सर अगर बात करें हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री की तो उन्होंने गाइडलाइन दी कि कोविड वार्ड में भी एक सेपरेट वार्ड की तैयारी होनी चाहिए जो आपके पेशेंट की केयर करने वाले लोग हैं उनमें क्या सिम्टम दिख रहा है क्या वो ऐसे हैं जो कि कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर रहे हैं क्योंकि अब प्रिकॉशन डोज की भी बात हो रही है सर हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स में हमने अलग से व्यवस्था की थी सेपरेट आइसोलेशन फैसिलिटी इंस्टीट्यूशनल जो हमारा जो वार्ड है जिसमें ओमिक्रोन को केस रखा है उनको अलग रूम्स दिए थे और ज्यादातर जो पेशेंट्स हैं उनके लिए हमने अलग टीम अलग डॉक्टर्स अलग नर्सेज अलग टेक्नीशियन सारी टीम हमने अलग से उनका एक बोर्ड बनाया था जो कि उनकी देखभाल करेगा और उसमें हमने देखा कि जो भी जो डॉक्टर्स हैं नर्सेज हैं अभी तक किसी को भी इन्फेक्शन नहीं हुआ है हमने उनके आरटीपीसीआर भी कराए टेस्ट भी कराए जो केयर प्रोवाइडर है बट नन ऑफ देम इज इन्फेक्टेड सो फार all right, Dr. Ravi Malik, coming to you first, uh, you're also a pediatrician and a lot of parents like myself uh, with growing up children are concerned about this uh, new wave. Is it going to affect children more? What have you gathered so far from the patterns that you have seen of the cases that have been reported, Dr. Malik? 
Oh, look, Omicron is uh, definitely, there is no doubt what the reports are coming. It is comparatively milder as compared to the Delta variant, number one. Number two, the symptomatology is little different. The patients have more of cold and running nose. They have sneezing. Now, the five common symptoms of Omicron are uh, night sweats, sneezing, running nose, fever, and body aches with some kind of fatigueness. So these are the main five symptoms which are there with the Omicron, uh, Omicron virus. And uh, uh, there are uh, less cases of loss of smell and taste as it has been reported. So this is the symptomatology. But having said that, by and large, the symptoms of Omicron, Delta variant or the classical variant, they all overlap with each other. So it is very difficult to pinpoint. But okay. one very common symptom with Omicron is the scratchy throat, which is there uh, with Omicron. Now, as far as uh, our experience of uh, uh, Omicron is concerned, it is definitely limited because there have been few cases of Omicron. We have to see how this uh, a virus takes a turn in our country. But one thing is clear, we need to be extremely cautious about this virus because the transmittability is three times more as compared to Delta variant and it is nine times more as compared to the classical variant. So we need to be extremely cautious because it is highly infectious and maybe in coming times avalanche of patients will come to us uh, if we don't take due precautions yes those are that's important information for our viewers dr chandrasekhar you've uh, been actively uh, involved in treating patients as well and you've been hands on with it uh, what has been your experience so far with the new cases coming in? The increase is phenomenal in, this, in a place like Mumbai, for instance. It's gone above 3,600 already. Is there any particular kind of pattern that you're noticing this time around different from the previous waves? Afrida, good evening. Uh, you have raised a very appropriate question, but uh, we are uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, some new wave or uh, we are beginning in the beginning of the third wave of the COVID uh, pandemic. Yes. And uh, completely, we cannot uh, rule out that we are we are out of a uh, Delta variant or not something like that. And uh, it already Dr. Ravi had mentioned that there could be a overlapping of the uh, Delta variant symptoms and the uh, Omicron variant uh, signs symptoms. Uh, Omicron is predominantly affecting the airways. The Delta variant was affecting the airways on the re lower respiratory tract. That was the lung involvement, the parenchyma involvement, the alveolar involvement that was affecting the gas exchange and the requirement for the oxygen was more with the Delta variant. Until now, what had been observed in the Omicron is that it is predominantly affecting the bigger airways. And that's why it is a more transmittable. <laughs> to be precise, it is documented that around 70 times more transmittable than the other variants or a Delta variants. That's why you can see that the number of rise of the cases is multiple folds. Mm -hmm. Even in the US also, in Europe also, you can see that around, around three to four lakhs of cases per day have been documented in American continent. Likewise, in, we are in India also, we are in the beginning of this third wave. This may be too early. And compared to the spike of the third, second wave, here in Omicron, the number of the cases per day could be a multiple folds higher than what we have seen previously in the Delta wave. But at the same time, what good thing we have seen in Omicron is that the oxygen requirement is less or no oxygen requirement in some patients. The other other systemic symptoms like a body ache and all have been explained. Such symptoms would be there. But here in these patients, one more interesting or important sign is that patient will be having a rigorous cough. Rigorous cough would be there because their airway involvement would be there. Okay. Uh, with this, I would request the public not to drop their guard because we are in the beginning phase of the one important uh, third wave. Here in this, the virus is very much transmissible than the previous variants. We have to be careful. Here also, we have a multiple groups in this, our public. Some are one way, one one dose vaccine they have taken. Hmm. Some have taken a two dose vaccines. And especially the children have not taken any vaccine. Yes. Uh, some evidences what we are emerging out in European countries or an American continent is that the, these are here, these are the areas where the predominantly even the children and the adult group and the elderly group, all they have received a one or two dose, more than two doses of vaccines also. Here, yes. how it, it will break out in India, especially in a pediatric age group, 
the, they are not vaccinated that's why we have hmm. we have hmm. we should not drop our guards yes dr swati maheshwari i understand these are early days but we would still like to gather from your experience what exactly do we need to be wary about in terms of prevention what can we do of course the numbers are rising here in mumbai at least people are getting alarmed because you know where you were at 600 cases just about a week ago uh, it's shooting up like anything so what is causing this surge according to you dr maheshwari the uh, one thing we definitely need to understand our glimmer of hope is that uh, we are seeing mild cases but again at the same time you know it should not give us a false sense of security that cases are mild so we can be complacent or we can go around as we wanted to go around and we can you know party and we can attend all the functions that we wanted to so i think uh, there is a word of caution here and as the other panelists are also saying that you know we have to be very very cautious right now because what we are seeing with omicron is that the transmission rate is super high in In comparison to delta so you know there are chances of transmitting the infection is very very high so you might step into market you know or you might step into a party or function and you might be having people around you who might be asymptomatic not you know having any symptoms yet they might be suffering from omicron and you might get the infection from them so one we have to be very very careful second guess we need to complete our vaccination we have to be very meticulous with the mask that we are using because we have to use it all the times so we have to be very very careful And right now, you know, prevent our children, and we have to, you know, take this, uh, you know, kind of an onus on us that we will not take our children to all such places which are crowded, which might be closed gatherings, you know. even if it's family or friends then we should avoid taking our children right now i think this is a time when we are on the upward slope of the third wave and therefore this is the time if we are very very cautious now we can save ourselves and our family and see especially right now what we are seeing is since omicron cases are mild right now but as and as volumes will increase we will have more and more immunocompromised and elderly getting infected and then the whole picture might turn yes. so we cannot yes. be very sure as of now as to how this omicron is going to behave you know So even if the cases are mild because of the sheer volume there can be a lot of deaths yes. so we have to be very very careful that we don't burden our hospitals right now mm. and secondly yes uh, people should you know kind of get in touch with their doctors immediately they see the early symptoms as were described by our panelist over here so that you know we don't miss out on these cases because what's happening is since the cases the symptoms are very very mild most of the people are negligent about it neither do they are interested in getting the rt pcr done but you should be careful because you know one Once one person is infected in the family there's a high chance of the whole family getting infected and the others might start showing symptoms you might not be you might be having less symptoms or mild symptoms but the others might have severe symptoms so be very very careful right now and don't kind of park off the rt pcr that we advise as doctors to get it done so you know most of the times what happens is as doctors we advise rt pcr but you know the patients they don't get it done so i think we should be very vigilant right now get the rt pcr done because now we have good options like monoclonal antibodies even molnupiravir would be coming soon to us so we have some good options and treatments which can be given to people who are high risk and you know we can prevent hospitalization and we can prevent complications so yes. don't be compl- that's a right very now. important message yes because we we have to be careful we're together in this and there's a social responsibility to be exercised we cannot over burden our hospitals like dr maheshwari is saying yes there's treatment available yes you will be discharged easily but only if not too many people arrive at the same time because then again uh, you know there are only so many doctors available that could become a crisis dr ravi malik uh, most people are vaccinated most people are asymptomatic uh, you know yet uh, we are also told at this stage that no major treatment is required as you were also highlighting and we heard from the lngp uh, md as well so what exactly is a person who is hospitalized how is that person being treated and uh, how long does it take uh, typically to recover this time around look the basic treatment starts only if the oxygenation is getting low and the patient is requiring oxygen then we start with steroids uh, or then oxygen therapy and maybe il6 inhibitors and other things otherwise in mild asymptomatic cases practically no treatment is required besides giving paracetamol or symptomatic treatment and we have to monitor the patient in bullet points i will like to uh, tell you few uh, things which are extremely important number one we must accept that we are in the initial part of this storm and the volcano is just waiting around the corner to erupt so we need to be extremely cautious number one 
Number two, it is very important for all of us to understand that vaccination drive should go at an industrial scale. Uh, in last 24 hours also, we have given 63 lakh of vaccines, I think, which is quite insufficient under the backdrop of fact that first dose has not been received by almost 10, 11 percent of the population, eligible population. Yes. And almost 35 to 40 percent, they have not received second dose of their uh, dose, what to talk of booster. So it is extremely important. We must learn from the people, those who are higher in food chain, as far as the corona is concerned, like USA and UK. You know, the vaccination rate over there is much stronger as compared to our country. In our country, eligible population is only 59%, 41% of the children, not even a single child is vaccinated. Very important bullet point is we need to protect our children also. Yes. Agree that this disease behaves in a very milder way. But you never know a new when a new mutant comes. So it is extremely important for us to protect our children. Overcrowding and social spreader events. I am again stressing upon it. Social spreader events may be political, religious or social. They cannot be tolerated in any way right now. So yes. even the political parties should take out innovative ways of doing the rallies. Maybe uh, on the digital platforms they can do. But we cannot afford in any way because right. our health infrastructure is yes. weak. Our, yes. By and large, our doctors, nurses, they will, they are exhausted for that matter. Mm -hmm. Although they are, uh, they are standing like a warrior, but still, we cannot take a blow on our hospitals any further. The so doctors I think that are, all these yes, things are are on uh, are ready. Uh, the health system now we are told by the authorities is equipped much better than how it was in the second wave. But that doesn't mean we can allow complacency to set in. Quick last word, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar and Dr. Maheshwari. First to you, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Yeah, uh, that's what uh, Dr. Ravi had mentioned that uh, not to be complacent uh, and uh, this is a super spreader virus and this is the early days of the third wave and how it is going to behave in a different group of public or different group of people because there are uh, children also, they are not vaccinated. Some public is there, they are single dose vaccinated. Some people are, they have taken two dose vaccine, but a uh, long time back it was taken second dose. And uh, uh, the, the evidences are still, it is too early for uh, to say that it is a milder variant or something like that. And how it is going to behave in a different people, like even compromised patients are uh, the people, whoever they have taken a vaccine second dose long back and how uh, this, this is too early for that. And uh, uh, I think uh, through you, Afrida, uh, I would like to draw the attention of the public. Uh, even though it is a new year event is going to happen or an election event in some part of the country is going to happen, people have to take care. People's participation is very important in getting this pandemic under control. Yes, fervent appeal from all the three doctors. Dr. Maheshwari. Yes, absolutely. What I like to say at this point of time is that we have been alarmed well in time. So, you know, we can stop the third wave from coming right even now. If we start acting all of us together, then we can stop this third wave. Let's not repeat what happened during the second wave and let's not wait for those disastrous results to actually awaken us. So I think I would really request everybody to be on their guards now. Save your children, save your elderly, save the vulnerable ones at your home and also save yourself. So, you know, we have to be very, very, you know, responsible for what we do now. And because we are seeing the surge now and nobody can stop the surge until and unless we decide to do it. So I think let everyone, all of us should get together and support the government in this because whatever good steps they take, if we are not going to support it, then all those good steps are not, are not for any good. So let's all put our acts together and, you know, we can prevent this third wave. Let's believe in that. Only if we behave responsibly, if we get vaccinated, if, you know, we kind of use the the mask, I think we can prevent it. So, and avoid all these overcrowding uh, spaces, you know, kind of the pictures that you are showing right now. I think yes. this is what uh, could be super spreader events. So this is what we actually need to prevent. So we need to, you know, hammer more and more into people that Omicron is there. Mm -hmm. You know, it is uh, the it is alarming now the ways the number are increasing because we as doctors are getting calls from all corners now that COVID test is coming post positive. We are seeing these symptoms which are very suggestive of COVID. So we must alarm you and each and everyone and all the audience that as doctors we are seeing a surge in COVID cases now. We are getting calls. So please, please be on your alert yes. and save your uh, family. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Malik, Dr. Maheshwari, and uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar for joining us. Very, very important message from all the three doctors. Thanks for giving us your time.